welcome to today's live chat. We're going to be talking about writing your first book, whether you are getting ready to write your first book or you are or you did that long ago. We're still going to talk about it. Um, so I think we're going to start by talking about our first books, first book we wrote or the first book we completed, what kind of book it was. So the first person I have is Desiree. Oh, okay. Um, the first book I wrote was called Dragon Song. And I wrote it when yeah. I was 12. And it's about a group of teenagers that can turn into dragons. Yes. <laughs> I'm not seeing a problem yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm on board for it. <laughs> uh, the next person I have is Kyra. Okay, the first book I wrote was called Fate's Game. It was like a re, I mean, it was like very, very chosen one, but just to like put it over the top, there were like three chosen ones. There were sisters, lots of elemental magic. Um, <laughs> I wrote this book in <laughs> sixth grade and actually what happened was my friend started writing the book and I was reading it and she didn't finish it. <laughs> and I got mad because I wanted to know what happened. So I asked if I could finish it. <laughs> um, and I did, so. <laughs> Yeah, and then I have Megan. I, uh, the first book that I wrote and finished was called Ethereal, which I have here. Please ignore the face on it. That's from a different video <laughs> that I did a long time ago. Um, I wrote it when I was 21. Um, and it was a YA paranormal ghost story. Um, the first book that I finished as an adult, like not counting stuff I wrote when I was like 10 years old because I don't remember any of that. Um, <laughs> the first thing I finished as an adult was the fantasy novel that I finished last spring, I think. But there was a lot of stuff I like started and didn't finish for a while. <laughs> I would start things. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the first thing I started when I decided to like get back into writing and start taking, like I was going to take a, a creative writing class. So I was like, oh, I should start writing a book again. And it was like, it was called, I'm pretty sure it's called The Weathermakers, because I'm really bad at titles. Um, but it was, like, about, like, these two girls who found out they could, like, control the weather. And, like, I remember it started with, like, a prologue that was, like, the great example of, like, why you shouldn't have prologues, because it was completely, like, unimportant. <laughs> it was, like, a prologue, like, from the third person of, like, distantly watching these two girls, like, laying on the grass and a storm starts and they're, like, playing in the rain or something. <laughs> And then the book, and then the book actually started with the girl as like an old woman telling the story to her like, granddaughter. So it was, <laughs> it was so great. And it was, she's like, let me tell you about me and my best friend when we were teenagers. So you know, <laughs> it was golden. I don't know why I couldn't finish that book. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the Weathermakers could also be a title for like a really hot and heavy romance between two meteorologists. Like that would sound really well. <laughs> That's what it actually was. <laughs> Crap out of that book. Yeah. <laughs> um, so do you guys know, like, what was the thing that made you, like, start a book? Like, you were like, I'm going to write a book now. Well, I guess mine was the anger that my friend didn't finish the book I was yeah. already invested in. <laughs> so I, like, just finished writing it out of spite. Which, at that point, it was, like... I think I wanted to find out what happened, but then I just made up what happened anyway. So I probably didn't actually need to write the book to do that. But, you know, whatever gets your foot in the door. It made you feel better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know I like, I was getting close to finishing college. I had like one semester left and had no idea what I was going to do with my life. And so I was like, I used to really love writing. I'm going to take a creative writing class. And so I was like, I should try writing something before this class starts. So, yeah, that was it. <laughs> uh, I really wanted to like a book that was like kind of like the Power Rangers, but with dragons. So <laughs> I wrote that. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Mine was like a spite write too, like Kyra's, <laughs> where like, except for I read a book that I really didn't like, and I've told this story a million times before on this channel, so I'm certain you've heard it if you've watched mm -hmm. this channel before, but I was, got so mad at the end of it that I was like, I could write a better book than this, and for the last six years, I've 
very painfully learned that I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I think it explains a lot about the way Megan and I am that we started writing out of spite. <laughs> 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 I think that pretty much sums us up. <laughs> yeah. And we continue, and we continue to this way out of spite. Out of spite. You turned in like a really angry robot. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we continue to do this out of spite. <laughs> It was unintentional. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always spiteful, just sometimes. I'm in a very sp <laughs> spiteful phase of writing right now. I think we talked about that last week. I don't know. Yeah. So before you guys all started your books, did you like do anything to prepare or were you like, I'm doing this book writing? Go. Well, I didn't realize what the concept of an outline was until like halfway through the novel. So <laughs> I just started writing and was like, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I had figured out some like twists that were going to be in it. I was like, they're going to find out they're half sisters part of the way through. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> I had some really cool twists planned out and that's all I had. And I knew they were going to go to Disney like World at some point. And the reason I, I wanted to like, write them at Disney World for some reason, I don't know why. <laughs> It, it, it almost sounds like Emma wrote like the modern adaptation of my like epic fantasy, because mine were also like <laughs> sisters who do weather things, yes, and other magic, but Amazing. lots of weathering. <laughs> yes, there was also a boy who did weather magic that they were going to be fighting over for like half most of the book. So, oh yeah, yeah, excellent. <laughs> I, basically, I, think I, had, I think I had two of those because there were like three of the sisters, but you know. There you go. Looking back on it, I'm like, that book had, like, every trope, like, imaginable in it, like, it was Oh, terrible. yeah. So many um, I know I had uh, done a lot of work outlining the, like, elemental magic society with, like, all these, like, clans of different magic and, like, all 500 characters in my book, even though there were only, like, four characters who actually mattered. I needed to make sure I had those other spare characters just in case. No. Definitely. You know. Never know when you never know. <laughs> you never know when you're gonna need a spare waterbender. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> My first book was a nano book. So I had like every scene plotted out, except for I I didn't really understand like what constituted a full story. So for my first two books, Ethereal and Wisteria was what the second one was called. Both of them ended at points that should have been the midpoint of the book. And I was like, this will be great because it can be a trilogy because trilogies <laughs> were very big back then. And so like going through them now, it's like, this is not a whole story. What were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I looked back on like the book that I finished last year and like I really like that book in a lot of ways but also I like looked at the ending and like I like ended it with like the worst like cliffhanger like I ended it with like a character walking into the room and the other character would be like OMG it's you and then it like ended there and I was like what is terrible? <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> so that's the, the first book that I queried which wasn't the first book that I finished um but the first book I queried I actually reread this week and I live tweeted it um it was great. But, I was there. I read them all. <laughs> Thank it was you. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but there actually were like, I mean, it was a hot mess. But there were like a surprising number of things that I did like about it. Um, one thing that, like, it wasn't really a cliffhanger, but I had I had the like best friend and bad boy love triangle going, and I was like very determined. Like I knew from the beginning which guy she was going to get with. And then as I was writing, the other guy ended up being way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> and she ended up with the wrong one at the end. And then I like got to the end and I like, instead of just going back and revising it so she ended up with the right guys, like, I'm just gonna have to write a sequel so she can get with the other guy. <laughs> 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 that that sequel has not yet been written, but <laughs> there's a little of that thought process there in that book. Yeah. So I guess one of the important things to note when you're writing your first novel ever is to make sure that it's a whole story because particularly if you're looking to traditionally publish, you need to be able, like it needs to be able to stand alone. 
it's a different ball game if you're planning on indie publishing. But yeah. for traditional, it needs to be a full story. And then if you're lucky and they want more of those books, that's cool. <laughs> Oh, do you have any questions? We've got a lot of people in the comments. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Feel free to ask us any book-related, writing-related questions, and we would love to answer them. Um, thanks to people who are sharing like their tips from like when they wrote their first novels. That's really cool. Uh, hello to everyone saying hello. Dark Deluxeville said, my first novel was written in ninth grade, and it was basically Mortal Instruments fan fiction. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I think a lot of people can say about their first book, like, it was basically this, but not as good. <laughs> yeah. The books I wrote as a kid, I never finished any, because they were all Harry Potter, and I couldn't figure out a way to end them that didn't have Quirrell getting turned to stone, because yes. that just seemed like too derivative. <laughs> Everything else was fine. <laughs> I think I might have had an Aragon fan fiction in there somewhere too, but a lot of Aragon. Uh, Maybe some Lord of the Rings. But Aragon. I think I had one early project that was like a Scooby Doo knockoff. Yes. I was like That's really determined easy. as a kid that I was going to be a detective. And, yes. You know, and I thought Scooby Doo was the most realistic depiction of detective work there was. So. It's so true. True. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here, Nancy Drew. I was like, uh, 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 Percy Jackson knockoff, but it was a play. It wasn't a novel. <laughs> no, so totally different. <laughs> totally different. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Except for, aren't they actually making like a play out of Percy Jackson yeah. or something like that? I think it might be a musical. I can't remember if it's a musical or a play. Maybe they stole it from you, Desiree. They did. They did. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it for summer camp and we performed it on the last day of camp. It was great. <laughs> I think we can also learn from all of these first book stories is it's okay for it to be terrible. Like, I think that was like part of what like kept me from ever finishing something is that like, I'd be like, oh, this is terrible. And I'd like stop writing it or like, um, I what else I was gonna say. I don't know, but yeah, it was a lot of, oh, like a lot of times I'd like come up with an idea that I was like, this is cool. And then I was like, it's too big. <laughs> like, yeah, scary. I, I'm not yeah. ready to write this. I'll write it later. But now later when I am hopefully a better writer, I don't want to write those stories anymore. So I wish I'd like done them at the time that I wanted to. So like, don't be afraid to write the stuff you want to write now. Even if it is terrible, you can revisit it one day. Which apparently I didn't have that problem because as like a sixth grader, I was like, yeah, I can totally write an epic fantasy with like 20 characters, three books. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll do like a standalone with yeah. four characters. Yeah. I think I was that confident when I was like, yeah, like in like sixth grade. Like I remember like trying to write stuff that was like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter knockoffs that were like yeah. these huge fantasy worlds. But then, yeah, when I was like 21 and getting back into writing, I was like, all of this is too big and scary. And I wish I'd just like gone for it. So don't be afraid. Yeah. I distinctly remember telling people like, oh, I've had this really cool idea, but I don't think I'm a good enough writer yet. Mm -hmm. And the more I write, the more I feel like that's how every idea feels. And yeah. you're not going to be a good enough writer to tackle it until you've written the first draft of it. Yeah. <laughs> also, a couple of those ideas I've like thought back on and I'm like, that really wasn't that great of an idea. Like I should have just written it then when I was a writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of those ideas I did write, and I queried a bunch of agents, and no one wanted it, so clearly it wasn't that great of an idea. One of those ideas, looking back on it, I realized it's like Harry Potter meets, like, beautiful creatures, and I was like, eh, I don't know. It's not something I think I would write now, so. Um, we've got other people in the comments. I wanted to give a shout out to, I'm really sorry, I'm sure I'm going to butcher your name. Please let me know how to pronounce it correctly. Um, Ife or Ife. Uh, Disu said, I just finished my first ever novel last week. It's a dark Peter Pan spinoff thing. Yay! Yeah, that's, way so to cool. go. <laughs> that's way cooler than any of my early story ideas. Uh, yeah, <laughs> same. <laughs> um, we also had Marshmallow Cass saying that the first book I did was when I was 13, a sort of night at the museum take. Um, Flatus58 said, I've started about 50 novels. Finishing apparently isn't my thing, LOL. Same. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm right there with you guys. <laughs> so many 
started manuscripts. I have like two yeah. finished ones and uh, like 15 non-finished ones. Yep. <laughs> right there with you. <laughs> um, we have a question. How much detail do I have to go into when planning a contemporary novel in terms of world slash characters slash plot? Because unlike fantasy, there is no fancy magic in the air. Trying to figure out how to answer I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like it really depends on what your style is. Like you could just pants it and not figure out anything. Um, with contemporary, like, yeah, you don't have a magic system you have to figure out, which is nice in a lot of ways. But also, since it's the real world, I think there's, like, this added trouble of, like, how do I make this city feel so real that, like, people want to visit it or people, like, think it exists even if it's not a real city, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I think you definitely... I, I, I wish... Mm -hmm. okay. I, I, I think you definitely should, like, figure out at least, like, the general area it's taking place in, whether it's like, I don't know, City. North Africa or like New England or, you know, the West Coast of Canada, like figuring out like the general area because that will change like the demographics of the people who live there and the culture. So, and you'll need to do like just at least a little bit of research of like what things, what trees look like there or like if it's a desert landscape, you know, that sort of thing, just so you have a good idea of where it takes place. Yeah, I wish Kelly was here because I think she did such a good job of this in really um, more of a kind. The town that that book is set in, like it's very, very real. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not a real town, but it felt real. Yeah. <laughs> it's real to us. It's yeah. real to us. Yes. <laughs> I was like ready to plan my next vacation there. <laughs> yeah. Um. We've got Alora so that uh, my first novel was sci-fi where this girl got turned into a bird. It was super weird. <laughs> um, I'm interested. I might read that, yeah. <laughs> what kind of bird? Scarred words. Yeah. Scarred words addict said my first book was in fifth grade and I finished it in sixth grade. Let's just say it was a mashup of Doctor Who, Sherlock, and Jurassic Park. It was so bad it's never going to see the light of day. Those are three awesome things, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had a question from Eugenia. Um, again, I'm so sorry, guys, if I mispronounce your name. Please be like, hey, get it right, lady. And uh, <laughs> I promise I'll get it right. <laughs> um, <laughs> said question when you're outlining your first novel do you outline chapter by chapter or scene by scene and then divide everything into chapters so i actually outlined that novel the first one i wrote i had like a chapter by chapter breakdown i don't know that it really matters <laughs> because part <laughs> of writing your first book is you're figuring out how you write mm -hmm. um so i don't know yeah, I've never out outlined detailed enough to like have it chapter by chapter or scene by scene. Like, I've pretty much always been like this half. Like, I figure out like the major plot points. Like, this happens in the middle. This happens like halfway between the middle and the end. You know, like the major stuff. And then I'll usually like figure out like the next few scenes. I'm like, these are what the next like four scenes will be, and I'll write them, and then I'll figure out the next few. So. Um, I used to detail outline. It, I would never finish books that I like super detailed outline because I'd get bored. I'd be like, oh, I already know what happens. This is not fun anymore. Yeah. Uh, and I did more general outlines, but it helped. Mm -hmm. When I wrote my first book, it felt much bigger than all the subsequent books because it had been years since I had written anything. And it was kind of this like, am I really going to do this? Can I really do this? And so for me, I wrote scene by scene what was going to happen. That way I knew I had a story. Like I could come up with a plot for a story. And then for some reason for me, like writing it seemed less big when I had the story written or outlined like that scene by scene. And then I later meshed them into chapters. Since then I don't 
do that. But when I was like first learning how to write a book, mm -hmm. that's what worked for me. Um, I'd say if you find that like you're trying to do that and you're like never getting to the book writing phase because of it, then stop trying to outline like that. So that's yeah. my problem is I always like thought I had to do that and I like never even started books because of it because I'd be like, I can't figure out what's going to happen in every single scene in this book. Like I haven't started it yet. So. Uh, Leah said the first book I finished was for NaNoWriMo during my junior year. Oh my gosh, twins. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, mine may have been my senior year of college actually. I think so. Yeah, senior. Almost twins. Mm -hmm. um, where'd it go? It was pretty rough, but had seers, shapeshifters, and demons who fed off people's pain. I lost it when my hard drive died. That's the worst. I, I want I that like book. The demons that feed off I know, I was like, rewrite yeah. it, because that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I like seers and shapeshifters, too, but like demons that feed off your pain. Yes. Yeah, write that book, please. <laughs> Um, Nocturne Kelt said, my first novel was middle grade, and it was the first in a series called Lesmore Dragons. It had elemental magic and Bram Wolf things, and it was so awful, lol. Everyone tempers it by saying my first book was awful. <laughs> lol. <laughs> lol. <laughs> Laugh at my pain. <laughs> also, I feel like a lot of people have used elemental magic in their first books. Yeah. My second yeah, one was all elemental magic. magic. <laughs> Yeah, it's a magic system that's very like easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, easy. not that it's like easy to work with a whole world, but it's like, well, it makes sense that there would be magic in these things. Yeah, yes. Um, in my first novel, the dragons, like their different scale types, had different elemental magic powers. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes. And, well, it's kind of funny because now I'm like thinking. Maybe this can transition because I know someone's asking about shiny new idea syndrome, but one of the shiny new ideas that's kind of like bubbling in the back of my brain right now, I think I'd actually be going back to elemental magic and trying to think like how to put a new spin on it. But, yes. you know, I, I mean, elemental magic can be cool. It's a classic for a reason. Yeah. yeah. And there, there are still books published like that do well with it. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, that does transition really well into the next question, which is from Anna. How do you guys personally get over SNS, shiny new idea syndrome? I love calling Great it SNS. Difficulty. What was that, Desiree? I said with great difficulty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I make a Pinterest I, I, for my new idea. But I make a Pinterest board for everything. So <laughs> me, like making a Pinterest board makes it worse. So I can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's so I don't. Um, it. I I Thanks. use I use the shiny new idea to bribe myself to like hit a milestone with whatever I'm working on. Mm -hmm. So whenever I finish like this chapter or this draft, then I'll like indulge the shiny new idea a little bit. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. I usually use it as my reward for finishing. Like if I finish the thing I'm working on then I can work on this project next. Yeah. Uh, but also write down any of the ideas you have so you don't forget them. Yes. <laughs> Forgetting an idea is the absolute worst. It's agony. Because <laughs> it, it, it might have been like your next great seller. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're so convinced you're going to remember it when you have the idea, and then you forget it. Yeah. I like to um, also try if I can to set a deadline. This book I'm working on done on November 30th or whatever. Nano is a great time to set <laughs> deadlines because they're built in for you. Um, and that helps me too. It's like, well, I have to finish it by this day because I'm a very goal oriented person. <laughs> We've got another question from Ife. I think I got it right that time, I hope. Um, another question. Do you have any tips for effective editing for your novel? I'm in the process of editing my Peter Pan story, the first novel, and need some guidance. Oh, boy, do we have advice. <laughs> I love editing advice. <laughs> Someone else can go first, because I'll talk for a really long time about it if I get started. <laughs> 
I think one of the keys to editing is being organized about it. So like having, like figuring out how you're going to do it. Like whether it's like, I really like Susan Denard has a really organized way of doing revisions if you want to look into her version, but like knowing what you're going to be looking for like are you just looking at plot problems with this round of revisions or are you looking at everything and like having like a place to write stuff down and like doing a new outline like figuring out how you're going to organize it all helps a lot you can't really pants revisions like you can drafting <laughs> yeah. yeah if you want to do so, lots and lots of rounds of revisions yeah like Kyra does <laughs> um. In general, I think it's really valuable to give yourself a little bit of space first, even if it's just like a few days or a week. Give yourself a little bit of time and then go back and read the whole thing through as quickly as you can. Like if you can read it all through in one sitting, that's the best because then you're not focusing on all the sentence level things because your first book is going to have a lot of plot holes. And in my opinion, it's better to fix those first and then go fix sentence level things at the very end. Um. Well, and one thing I think I've said before um, is I think when you're learning to write, there's kind of a quality versus quantity thing where you definitely should revise because, so revising leads to quality books. Um, but you get to be better by writing lots of books. I think better, like, I think that's a more efficient way to learn to write than by, like, writing one thing and just trying to revise it for years and years and years, um, which is what I did. I worked on this one elemental first novel for, like, from sixth grade all the way through high school, which, I mean, I was, like, still really young, so that wasn't a big deal, but um, sometimes I kind of wish I'd, like, stepped away from that and worked on other things during that time, even if you come back to it. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I think it's a fine balance between like revising, but also like um, being willing to go to other things as well, and not being too hung up on the one novel. Oh, I do have some line level advice too, actually, because the biggest thing I noticed that was wrong with my first ever book was that the sentences just weren't that good. Like there were giant plot holes that you could drive cars through and stuff too. <laughs> but the writing itself, it felt like I would write a lot of words where there only needed to be a few words. So I would say something like, uh, let's see, I have a passage here. By the time she'd gotten to Sam's house, after freshening up and throwing on a pair of skinny jeans to go with her tank top and coat, Jacob had already arrived. And like really, <laughs> she could have just said Jacob was already there when she got there. Or like she had to shower so Jacob beat her there. And then I go on like afterwards and it's like a very detailed description of how Jacob is dressed. And then my favorite line, um, May could almost feel the awkwardness in the air as if it were a tangible thing in the air. <laughs> <laughs> so like looking for phrases where it's like, that's super repetitive. You don't need to say that a bunch of times. Or like. I, I had one that like, I, I guess I'd let my cousin read my book. This, this wasn't the elemental one, but it was like kind of written during a similar time period, like in a notebook, I was probably in middle school. Um, and it, like was mostly just an error, but I said like they heard a racket screaming and I guess I couldn't decide whether I want to say racket or screaming, but <laughs> she like for years and like we'll still sometimes bring this up like she envisions this like tennis racket that's just like <laughs> running around screaming. <laughs> <laughs> and she still teases me about that, so. Amazing. And I think that like goes back to what Kyra was saying about like continue to write more and more books because that's how you'll improve the quality of your writing. And, and something else that's kind of similar to like line level stuff is when I was um, rereading this book that I reread this week, I noticed that a lot of the dialogue was not very natural sounding. Like not as, not as bad as like the earlier books, but it's still not, it was just like a lot of things that's like, people don't sound like that. They don't speak like that. It just sounded yeah. very contrived and you know, mm -hmm. which I mean, 
when you're writing a book, the dialogue is contrived. You're making these people say these things, but yeah. you know, the trick is to not make it sound like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't mean that like you have to put your first novel aside and just say like I wrote the first one now I'm never going to look at it again um, because there are lots of people who do end up like their first novel they've ever finished is the one that ends up getting published but it just means like keep writing other things while you're revising this first novel keep learning how to better write and don't be afraid to really gut your first novel even though like you love it. Like, I will always absolutely love this book and because it's like, it's my first book, my first book baby. Um, and so sometimes it's hard to be like, I need to slash out the entire second two thirds of the book. Um, so don't be afraid to make big changes well, when you know they'll be better for the story. And, and you can always think about the things that you do love about the book and like transfer those to other books or whatever. So, you know, because I think there is always going to be something in your, I mean, you wrote that book for a reason. And if you liked it enough to finish it, like there was obviously something you liked about it. I shouldn't say obviously, maybe not. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would think there would be something about that book that you liked. Um, I was going to ask a question. Oh yes, how many books have you guys written? at this point in your writing. Completed books? Whatever you want to interpret it as. Completed books or amount of words that equal completed books. <laughs> <laughs> I have two completed books. And then a few started and not finished. I have like, like honestly I have like one and a half. Like, like one and a fourth, really. <laughs> If we're, if we're talking just like first drafts, then six or seven, I think. Probably. That's awesome. Yeah, the book I got my agent with was my fifth book, but I had written a sixth one by the time I got the agent. So um, we had a question from Leah. What's the biggest lesson you learned after writing your first manuscript? Mm -hmm. That face does <laughs> <laughs> The <laughs> ultimate thinking face. <laughs> the biggest thumbnail material right there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just lost it. uh, probably like, I don't know, like, there's so many lessons. I, <laughs> I think like the biggest one was just that I like could finish a book. Like, I think that's a that's big thing. With you stole mine. Especially, if, especially if you're the kind of person who like starts a lot of books and doesn't finish them when you finally do finish one, it's like, I can do this. It's mm -hmm. possible. So that's a good one. Mm -hmm. I also For personally sure. learned about myself and my writing that I really hate writing the ends of books and I'm really bad at it, so. Same. 100% <laughs> agree with you. <laughs> no, I love writing the ends. It's the beginnings I hate and the middle. I like writing ends, though. See, after, no. the, after the, like, the resolution stuff, I can write pretty well, like wrapping everything up, but it's like the whole like climax sequence yeah. that I struggle with. And it's like the most See, exciting stuff, like, but I don't want to write it for some reason. When I'm like conceiving a book, I like have a big final end battle scene yeah. in mind and like everything else just has, I have to figure out how we get to that point. So. <laughs> yeah, it's actually writing it is the problem. So sometimes it's figuring out what's going to happen, but a lot of times it's just writing it for some reason. Like I cannot bring myself to sit down and write those scenes. I don't know why. <laughs> Struggle with that too. I get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I also, though, I, like, I would get them into situations, and it's like, I don't know how to get them out of this. <laughs> um, there's, I know what I want the end to be. Yeah. <laughs> like, when I get stuck, like, plot wise, I like, situation, like, sometimes I could, like, um, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> 
We did, we did have like one point when Megan and I were writing the last draft of our book together <laughs> where like it was my turn to write a chapter and it like had, was taking me forever and I finally just emailed her and was like, I got the characters into a situation and I know they need to do something really smart to get out of it, but I don't know what the really smart thing is yet, so <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> we figured it out, it's okay. So <laughs> yeah, it made we it did out finish. okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's where having writing friends can come in really handy. Um, so like once you start writing your first book, I think it's really useful to start getting involved. Obviously, if you're watching this and commenting, you're already getting involved in the writing community. <laughs> but like commenting on videos, being on Twitter, like it's really, really nice to have writing friends and to be like, hey, they're supposed to do this really smart thing. Do you have any <laughs> ideas for me? Here's my ideas, and here's why they don't work. How can we make my ideas work? Yeah. Um, we had another question. Where did it go? Oh, Dark Deluxe Full. That in their current novel, they're having trouble writing too much description compared to dialogue. Um, which was different from the first time they were a novel because they had like more dialogue than description that time. Um, so how do you like balance those things is what I think they're asking. Balancing dialogue and description. I think that is a problem for future you in revisions. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say, kind of. Like, um, like one of the things I do when I revise quote unquote revise because I don't really revise much. Um, but I like take highlighters and I'll highlight like dialogue versus description versus like character development. And then like if there's like giant chunks of like description or dialogue, you can go in your story and like kind of break it up. Do you if you can see if there's like two pages of description. There's a really good program called Pro Writing Aid, which I've talked about before in a video. I recommend it. They have this amazing, I don't know how it works, I don't know what the algorithm is, but they have this thing when you run your chapters through it that will highlight parts and be like, it seems like this is backstory that might be unnecessary. And it's been a game changer for me. <laughs> Like, I run through my chapters through those, and it will just highlight something and be like, it seems like this is unnecessary. I'm like, wow, computer, you're right. Maybe you should write this book for me. <laughs> I just Googled that so I could get that program. Yeah, yeah I love it. And it's very inexpensive. Um, it's $40 for a year. Um, and they... They have like a web editor too, where you can do 500 words at a time for free. Uh, I highly recommend it. <laughs> Not a sponsor, just love them. But if you want to sponsor me, you know where to find me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also trying out something with drafting um, with the project I'm working on now. I actually, I'm going to be talking about it in this week's video a little bit, but um, basically it's like I'm, it, it definitely slows down your writing time. So if you're the kind of person who wants to like turn out first drafts really quickly and then go back and fix them, it's not a good idea for you probably. But what um, I'm doing is like writing a super rough bare bones like draft of each scene by hand where it's just like, this is what the characters are saying and this is what they're doing. And then going back and typing up the scene and fleshing it out because one of my problems I have is that I can't, draft the scene and figure out what's happening and like I don't know and, and get it all fleshed out and sounding good at the same time like I just can't think about multiple things at once I guess so it's like helping because I'm figuring out everything that's going on the dialogue what the characters are saying and then I can go back and figure out like description and like emotions and all of that when I type it and so that way I'm getting a better balance I guess is what I'm saying because I can like think about the balance when I'm typing it up instead of having to think about the balance when I'm like first drafting it. I don't know if that made sense, but there you go. <laughs> I think for me, and maybe this is partially because I'm a super pantser, but the first time I write a book, 
usually I just am writing whatever I have, which a lot of times is not much, but maybe I'll have the characters and like one conflict thing. <laughs> and I might not have the setting yet and I might not have all the like dialogue or character relationships. And conversely in another book, I might have lots of character relationships and dialogue, but no, usually I don't have setting. That's usually the thing I don't have. <laughs> yeah, Other same. than the one book where I like outline the, the 20 clans of yeah. <laughs> you know elemental magicians, but yeah. Other than that, I usually don't have setting. <laughs> yeah. um, Book had so enough it, setting for all the other books. Apparently. <laughs> um, yeah. That's where it all went. I need to go find that notebook and still all the setting <laughs> back. Um, anyway, so what I was getting at, though, is like you write whatever you have in the first draft, and then the second draft, you go back and add in the elements you don't have. Yeah. Like setting. And that's basically what I'm doing, except I'm doing it scene by scene. Instead of writing the whole book like that and then going back, I'm doing each scene like that and then fleshing it out. So mm -hmm. just yeah. depends on how you want to do it and how quickly you want to get right. your first draft done. Well, and this kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, where a lot of like writing your first, first book is just figuring out how you write. So, you know, you'll notice we have written several books now under our belts and we all have very different writing processes and that's because we've kind of worked that out. So I say for your first book, especially just do whatever kind of makes sense to you. Yeah. And as you continue to write and grow as a writer, like you'll refine that and, and that, that'll that make you a more efficient writer too, which is good. Yeah. So, so don't, I don't know, I, I think, don't worry too much about process the first time, just like get stuff on paper. Mm -hmm. um, we had a question. Sorry, I'm like scrolling through. There's so many amazing comments in the discussion section. Thank you, everyone. Um, Marshmallow Cass asked, would you write a story or a book for a family member or friend? I'd like to write a story for my sister for her birthday. Do you think that would be a good idea? If you want to and you have an idea for it, go for it. Yeah. yeah. One of the things you mentioned uh, a few comments down was getting it printed through something like Create Space. And I will say, that's awesome. Like, but do your research. I don't know this for sure, but I know like Create Space is mainly a self publishing platform. So if you do do it through them, like you may like publish the book. Yeah. Um, and so if, if you're not ready to have like a book published and you really mostly want it to be like for your sister for her birthday, just make sure you're doing your research and inadvertently publishing it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I don't know that there is a way to do that through Create Space. I don't use this Create is what Space. It would be great to have Kelly here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wish Kelly was here. <laughs> Kelly is our self publishing expert. Where is she? I Snapchatted her and she never she replied. She people at her house. And she doesn't know when they're going to leave. Yes, friends. What? She has an office she can lock herself in. I don't understand. Right? <laughs> I don't see the problem. <laughs> um, we've got a question. How do you decide which shiny idea to write after you've finished your first book? Because I have like 20 ideas that I planned but not started on. I think that's what the face on this book was for. <laughs> what <laughs> idea do I write next? <laughs> I think it's a combination of what you're most excited for and what you have the most fleshed out. So kind of weighing those two things. Like if you're super excited for something, but all you have is like a main character and you don't know anything else about it, then it might not be the best idea unless you can figure out the rest of it. But it needs to be something you have enough to make a story out of and also are very excited about. And if you're not sure, just pick one and go. And if you don't like it, you can always just switch. Like if it really, really feels like it's not working. I know Wait, we say that what you did after your dinosaur video. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you I literally things? put my ideas in a hat and picked one. <laughs> it worked out really, really conveniently, but that was also the book that my agent wanted me to work on after I told her the ideas. I'm like, oh, good, because that's the one I've been working on. <laughs> um, we had a question from Master Ascendant. Do you guys use Patreon? No. 
we make all these videos in our free time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do not monetize or do sponsors or anything. Um, I do know of some indie authors who use that though, and I highly support that if that's a way you want to indie publish your books. I think that's really cool. Um, We got a question from Dark Deluxeful. When do you start querying after you've finished your book? It's a very good question. I've never done that, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that conversation. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't query the first one. Um, the one I did query was after like a couple rounds of beta readers. And I didn't query that one very extensively because I kind of realized that it had issues, but. But the one that you did query, like the first one you queried. The first, first one I queried, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for me, whether it's your first ever book that you're wanting to query or it's like your third book or whatever, second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth, you know. Um, the biggest thing to me is that you've done at least one round of revisions on your own and that you've done another round of revisions after beta readers have read it. At least two, preferably three beta readers. Um, I did a big video on here with a huge list of places you can find beta readers. So if you're not sure where to look, go check that out. Um, yeah, the biggest thing to me isn't, like, I can never tell when my book is super ready, but if a beta reader tells me, like, do this, this, and this, and you'll be ready, and then I do this, this, and this, <laughs> then I feel pretty confident that it's ready. Yeah. And, like, make sure the book is as ready as you can get it, but then if you, mm -hmm. like, send it out and it doesn't get picked up, that's okay. You can write another book. I mean, like, yeah. it's sad, but you can write another book. <laughs> it's okay. Beth Revis got her 11th book published. That's how many books it told her, took her, so. Um, and the thing about querying is you don't send 100 queries at once. A, that would be exhausting. <laughs> it takes so long just to send one query. Why would you do that to yourself? And B, <laughs> it's not a smart tactic, because if you send out 10 queries and get all form rejections on all 10 very quickly, um, very quickly, meaning within like six weeks, because <laughs> querying takes forever, uh, then you know that you need to go back and fix something, that it's not quite ready yet. Uh, and then when you get more personalized feedback, you know you're getting closer, and then you can take that feedback. Querying isn't like a one and done thing. Like you can still revise your book if it turns out you need to. Um, and with that, I need to jump out before the next question. I was leaving us. I have to leave okay, her. Bye, I'm leaving all of us. She does. It's not for one friend. But <laughs> I have to go hang out with my <laughs> friends. Anyway, this was lovely. Thank you for listening to me talk about my terrible first book. <laughs> bye. Bye, Kyra. Bye. We have, we'll answer a few more questions. You see on that? We'll hit the hour mark too. Now there's only three of us. Seven word nerds and only three of us could be here tonight. It's like it's a holiday or something. Right. <laughs> Whatever. It's like other people care about their moms or something. <laughs> um, I don't know, Desiree, you may have tips for this one. But Anna asked, anybody have any episodic screenwriting tips? And you're kind of our screenwriting person. Mm -hmm. Uh, it depends, like, if you're writing, like, the first season of something, of, like, a show that you want to write, I would say know what's going to happen and, like, know how many episodes is going to, uh, however you're going to write or however it's going to be in your series and know what's going to happen in each episode. So that's really, really, really important before you start <laughs> writing them. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Never done any screenwriting, so I'll leave it with this. Yeah, I've read some books on screenwriting, mm -hmm. but that isn't quite the same as actually writing screenplays. There are a lot of books about screenwriting out there, so. Yeah. And Desiree did a video 
on sites. I sure. did about websites. There's so many websites. Yeah. About that video. After I took yeah, it's great class. I will have more advice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And if you're wanting to go look up any of these videos I've been mentioning and you're having a hard time finding them on our YouTube channel, you can go to our website, yawordnerds.com. We have a search bar, so you can write in there, like, writing for TV and or screenwriting or something, and you should get all our videos on writing for TV and screenwriting. Um, next question from Crafty May Pen. Do you have any suggestions for writing series? That's definitely something that depends on whether you're planning on self-publishing or traditional publishing. Because if you're traditional publishing, you don't want to plan too much for a series because you don't know if the publisher is going to buy multiple books. You don't know how much your agent and editor are going to want you to change the first book. So like, definitely, if you're going to be traditionally publishing, don't write the second book until after you've sold your first book and been through edits with your editor because you could change significant things. Mm -hmm. Or if you do, like, mm -hmm. just understand that you could have to trash the entire book. Yeah, so, yeah. So in general, it's better just not to do it because you don't want to waste your own time. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. like, know the rules. And if you're going to break them, at least know the rules. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. but <laughs> definitely, like, if you know that the book you're writing needs to be a series or could be a series like I think it's a great idea to have ideas for what would happen in the rest of it like I, I usually I try to usually if I know that a book would be a part of a series that a book I'm writing I try to know like what each of the other books would be about like the next book is going to be about one of the friends goes missing and they have to go out and find him and then the next book is about this happening um, just so I have an idea of what I'm aiming towards and I usually have an idea of how, like, the main plot line that's introduced in the first one, like, how it would continue through more books. But mm -hmm. it's very general ideas. I don't do, like, a ton of plotting for future books. Yeah. I, um, I have had pseudo experience with this now. <laughs> and um, so when I wrote the book that I am on sub with, um, I knew that I would want it to be well, at first I thought it was going to be a trilogy. Like, I knew I wanted to be, have multiple books, but I didn't know how many. And then as I was writing, it was like, this doesn't feel like there's three books there. <laughs> um, so when I got my agent, I pitched it as a duology. Um, and so I had this whole first book that I'd written. And then all I knew for the second book, I was like, and in the second book, I want to make these two people who hate each other so much work together against a common enemy. And she was like, dope, I love that. <laughs> Um, and so that was literally all I knew at that point. And then we have like brainstormed a teeny bit. Um, and bef as we were preparing to go on sub, she had me write like a query letter basically again, because apparently query letters are a thing you're going to be writing forever. <laughs> um, like a query letter that just went over the basics. And if the book sells, then me, my agent and my editor, We'll figure out, does book two do anything that will drastically affect book one? And like fix all that as we go. Um, we had another question. Do you find fantasy or contemporary easier to write? Fantasy. Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> In general, fantasy. <laughs> but that's because I've never written a contemporary where you can kill people. <laughs> <laughs> I feel some like... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, like, I, for some reason, find it easier. And, of course, this is partly because I read more fantasy and I have written more fantasy. Like, I find it easier to create a whole world than, like, try to be true and correct to a world that exists. Like, it's easier to just make up your own stuff sometimes, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think, personally, like, I, I think I... <laughs> so, <laughs> fantasy is weird. Yeah. yeah. I will say that 
voice comes a little easier to me in contemporary, um, or at least a likable voice for sure. Like in fantasy, all my characters are terrible people, and it's very easy to write like murderous, but in contemporary to me, it's much easier to come up with like a very relatable voice. Yeah. All right. Um, we had a question from Jody with regards to fan fiction. Um, I guess she's writing a fan fiction um, for a soap opera, and um, both the male leads have AIDS. Would it be disrespecting the character to not have that disease in the story, in the fan fiction? Good question. <laughs> I, fan fiction, there's a lot of wiggle room. Were I in your situation, I would not remove something that integral to the character from it. Yeah, I would keep it in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right. These are going to be our last two questions. Did I already say that? <laughs> I don't know. I think you said we're going to be finishing up, but you didn't okay. say that. Okay. Two questions. These will be our last two. Um, first one is from Davis. What do you do if you know how you want the story to end, but don't get there by the book's end lengthwise, uh, but didn't really have much conflict? Signed, the hot dog question guy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so is he saying he knows the ending, but when he gets to that point, the book, like the book isn't long enough? What I'm getting from this question is, um, you know how you want the book to end, but you hit 70,000 words and you're not there yet. And it feels like not much has happened. Mm -hmm. I would say keep going until you get to what the ending is supposed to be. And you can go back and cut stuff out. Like when you go back and say like, oh, my act one was like, way too much set up and was half the book, then you know you need to cut half of act one, so. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about how yeah. long your first That's draft is. That's future use problem. Yeah. <laughs> I wish my first drafts were too long and I needed to cut things. Oh my god. Hey, my first draft was so short. <laughs> my last one was 50,000 words. I was like, ugh. Yeah, my first book that I wrote, I pulled it up recently so I could look at it. It was 50,000 and like 24 words. Like I hit the nano word count and then I was done. The end. Story over. My first yeah. one was 60 and then this one went down to like 55. I was like, they're getting shorter. Yeah. <laughs> Just panic. <laughs> um, the one that I wrote with Kyra, I. I always want to be like, it's my longest book ever, but I only wrote half of it. But it's almost 90,000, which is like, that's at a point where we might need to cut stuff. And it's like, a whole new world. What <laughs> happens in your book for it to be that long? How do you cut? <laughs> um, and last question from Can. How creative is too creative? I think I'm trying to shove too much into one story. Should I focus on growing my skills by writing one story at a time or go gangbusters? I suppose if you mean Maybe like too you. much plot, yeah, I would say do whatever you want. I mean, if, if it is too much plot, that's the one thing I can see being a problem if like there's too many plot threads going on because then it might stop you from finishing the book because you're trying to juggle too many things. Mm -hmm. But if it's just lots of cool ideas, then just go for it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. If you think you can handle it, then go for it. Writing is all about If it gets to be too much, then just drop a plot line and keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fix it later. <laughs> yeah. Part of, I feel like a huge part of writing books is like, especially your first book is just like learning 
what works for you and what doesn't. And so if you're doing lots of ideas or lots of threads and it's not working, just drop one of them and you can fix it in revision. <laughs> <laughs> you can use that plot thread in another book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've recycled so many characters, and this kind of relates. I know I said that one was the last question, but we had a really good. Would you ever query your second book, but keep your first one for the possibility of like an option clause? Um, and I feel like yeah, never totally delete a book. Just like never, just totally get rid of a thread and think I'll never need this again, and just throw it into a dumpster fire. I think most authors that I've heard talk about their first books have been like, one day I want to go back to it and like revisit the idea because I like the idea, but the writing is terrible. So yeah, always hold on to it because you can go back and redo it one day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or at the very least you can, you know, one day you're at like a conference and they want you to read your writing from when you were 13 and you can pull it up and read it and yeah. show everyone how terrible you were. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. All right. Do you have any last comments? Advice? Um, your first. Yeah, book I like the. Just, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say that your first book is probably gonna be terrible, and that's okay because everybody's first book is terrible. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid to write. To just write it. Yeah, and don't stop. Because sometimes you'll think like, oh, I've made a mistake or, oh, I'm not good at writing and I need to be an engineer or something. <laughs> uh, you could be an engineer and be a writer. But like, don't quit because you think you're not good at it. No one is good at it when they first start. And you can totally do it. Like, if I can write a book, you can write a book. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you for watching. That's it for tonight. Um, as always, no we'll live chat next week. No live chat next week. Okay. I did not know that. So now we know. <laughs> okay. Good to know. No live chat next week. And uh, but we will be here all week with videos daily as usual. So we will see you guys later. Bye. Yeah, read six Bye. of crows. Read six of crows. Read six of crows. Read the book club at the end of the month. Yes, in two weeks. Six of crows. Read it. Yes. Read it. Yes. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>